Right. Now, Charles, I don't know if you got a preview of some of the arguments that have happened when we talked about LeBron versus MJ, but right. Coach Jim Beheim he said that the more he watched LeBron, the more he wasn't so sure that Michael Jordan was the best player he ever saw. So, wow. I'm asking you, you know him, he's one of your best friends, weigh in. Weigh in on Behind oh. or Michael Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> weigh in on whether or not you think that's true. Do you agree or disagree with that I statement? Think that's a topic that shouldn't be really discussed, but you know, being Michael Jordan in the class is on, and Behind is a great college coach. I know a lot of guys he coached, but uh, I got to take my food over to Michael Jordan house. Thank if I'm going to talk about this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like case I, close. See, see, he didn't even want to touch this. Well, no, 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 listen, because see, Skip gets all emotional about MJ, and that is what it is. What I'm saying is this. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> debates that Michael Jordan is the greatest we've ever seen. That, right. I mean, that's a top. We understand that. Right. But ultimately, when you start talking about people in terms of their athletic prowess, their abilities, et cetera, et cetera, and what they bring to the table, who belongs to be mentioned in that sentence, mm -hmm. I say it's not just Kobe. It's LeBron as well. Now that he's got that chip and he's got that monkey off his back, talent-wise, we can look at him. He still has more to prove. We know he's not better than Michael Jordan. We certainly know he doesn't have Michael Jordan's heart. But at the same right. time, Skip's attitude is, it's Michael Jordan. Doesn't even need to be discussed. Like, nobody ever warrants being mentioned. Like, the game no, doesn't No, not, not nobody ever. Just LeBron James. Sorry. Well, right. you know, Michael Jordan just did so much at a time that the league needed someone. I think that uh, Bird, Magic, you know, Michael Jordan, um, you know, I think it was Kobe, LeBron. You know, you had some other players in there yeah. between them. But, uh, you know, everybody had their time. And, and he had maybe the best run in any athlete, probably a 10-year run. Right. You can, we can talk about. Okay, so, let, let me ask Wood. Mr. Oakley. What would happen if you took Michael Jordan in his prime and LeBron, I assume he's right now in his prime? prime. Could yeah, we yeah, say that? 27, okay. 28, yeah. All right. One-on-one -on -one for all the marbles. Who wins that? One-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, not being biased. Um, Michael Jordan. This, see, I mean, my thing, you. LeBron will have End to shoot, discussion. John, but Michael can play defense. LeBron can play defense, but I think that Michael is a better shooter. Definitely. LeBron can do a lot. He's a triple threat guy. He bring a lot to the table, but, you know, when you, you know, like Frosted Flakes and Corn Flakes. <laughs> I mean, they still flakes, but some sugar on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Case closed. Clever. Michael Jordan in his prime. It depends on what y'all are defining. I remember Michael Jordan's jump shot coming when he was fading beyond his prime. Before then, it wasn't his jump shot. He just had everything. He was a killer. He got to the hole. He was an aerial assault. He did it all. Yeah, but when it was time to hit the well, money ball shot, he hit it. But my thing, it was a different era, though. Defense was different. Right. I mean, even though he got a lot of points, he worked for him. Right. And I think LeBron and figure out how the lead is. He can get That's to the That's a pass. great argument because yeah. the game I, is considerably softer today yeah. than it was. Right, it's in the way soft. I mean, in the final, I was at the game. You know, Perkins will be a tough guy. And LeBron went the whole, after the first game, Miami dictated the whole series. They went nothing that Miami, they did everything they wanted to do. Right. Okay. When they wanted to. Speaking of soft, why has today's NBA game become so soft? So speaking from a man who was, was yeah. a noted one of the enforcers. Right. Yes, he was one of the enforcers. Yes. I appreciate yeah. that. I don't have to enforce, you know, I wouldn't, I'm, I don't go around beating on people. I had to enforce. Excuse at me, that time. Patrick Ewan was never <laughs> in a fight in his career because of you. Well, because everybody right. knew yeah, that if they mess with Patrick Ewan, they were going to have to deal with you. Well, that's my teammate. There we go. I took care of a lot of my teammates. Yes, you did. I took care of Michael Jordan, Patrick yes, Jordan, that's Vince, right. Trace McGrady. That's right. You even took uh, care of John Starks, God I bless mean, you. Well, you know, God bless you. We went to war together. But anytime somebody go to war, you got to give them credit. But things do happen. But, um, you know, it's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So I think that LeBron and Michael Jordan, I mean. Okay, but, but, but the but why of the softness. The why, why, why of the softness. Yeah. Softness is, I think it started with management. And I think it started in college. You know, the guys going one year out, not getting a chance to develop, um, can't take criticism. And then when they get to the NBA, the owners don't want to be fragile. The, the coach is scared to say something to the player. So when you're scared to say something to your player, you're not going to grow. You got to get into these players. I think Phil Jackson do it, Doc Rivers do it. I think they might be the best two of getting on their guys and make them go. But a lot of the guys, you get on them, they go into a doghouse. Yeah. I don't know why. And all the, all the guys, they still get to check twice a month. I mean, they just sensitive now.